What organs does Lyme disease affect? This is a question I commonly get asked. I'm Dr. Daniel Cameron. This is a part of a Common Sense Lyme series. So let's begin. Lyme disease is uh, expected and found in so many organs in the body. It shows up as a disseminated Lyme rash in some cases, but uh, almost always uh, you'll find some organ involved. Skin is the most visible, obvious evidence of Lyme, but uh, only maybe half get a rash. The rash may be atypical, and uh, it could be a disseminated Lyme rash, the oval rash, uh, all types of rash. But over time, people I take care of who have chronic Lyme or post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, whatever you call it, often don't have that healthy a skin and they nails and hair, sometimes they can be frustrated that the hair never seems right again. The joints can get involved. Uh, it was first noted that there was inflammation of the knee, which is a soft tissue. It's called synovitis. The hip uh, is called bursitis. And the lower back, just to the lower right and lower left side where you might think sciatica is, that's called sacroiliitis. But this soft tissue shows up all over the, the body. And sometimes uh, it's confused with fibromyalgia because if someone presses on this soft tissue in multiple locations, uh, it hurts. And, uh, but Lyme causes the same issue. And some people never have knee pain or knee swelling. You, they typically don't get the arthritis that you might see by, by x-rays. The nervous system is often involved and the nervous system uh, could be headaches, head pressure, dizziness, uh, lightheadedness, uh, can't concentrate, can't focus, uh, can't process as, as well. And there's lightheadedness, but sometimes that lightheadedness is actually from the autonomic nervous system rather than the brain. There's a uh, sensory thing uh, we'll talk about in the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system can lead to sensory changes uh, it can affect the uh, vision so that it might be bright. Uh, you might be sensitive to um, sound. The, uh, the sensitivity to heat and cold uh, might be off. Uh, sometimes people have both sensitive to heat and cold. The smell can be over uh, overactive. And just a hyper-awareness of the, uh, the body. Pain can be increased. The heart can get involved. They first identified heart as heart block where the electrical current wasn't uh, going through the heart as well and people could get heart block and are at risk of uh, needing a pacemaker. Antibiotics take care of that if you can catch it in time. But a lot of people have um, an autonomic issue called POTS. They may not meet the definition of POTS but they're lighted when they move when light is when they get up and uh, that's uh, often uh, difficult to treat. They might uh, treat with medicines for POTS, but treating Lyme uh, is uh, easiest to uh, way to clear up the POTS. Now, if you're an adolescent or young adult, POTS can be particularly frustrating. Maybe the dominant issue might knock you out of sports, uh, knock you out of being able to participate in school, uh, but it's, a, it's part of the, what we call an umbrella of Lyme carditis. It's just a Lyme carditis might not be visible on an echo stress. In fact, it's hardly ever visible on an echo stress or a halter. I've been mentioning the autonomic nervous system, which explains some of the symptoms that we talked about earlier. But POTS also uh, is something that uh, is not just under the classification of, of Lyme carditis. It's, uh, it's an important uh, autonomic response. It could be an overactive immune state to Lyme that leads to an autonomic issues. But the autonomic nervous system takes care of automatic things like the stomach or the bladder. So people can have constipation, nausea. They might have been going through an irritable bowel evaluation, gastroparesis evaluation. They may even be thinking that it must be leaky gut. And uh, so it uh, often leads to this uh, uh, range of symptoms that one doesn't think about. It can affect the sleep and fatigue. It's almost like a tired, wired state People have an overactive immune response to, to Lyme. So this overactive immune response is kind of like an adrenaline problem. So they might be exhausted if they go to sleep. 
but right away they're up. It's sort of a mixture of both feelings. And uh, sometimes people focus just on the sleep first before they realize the Lyme disease is what's driving the sleep problem. Mental health. Lyme can affect um, a whole range of mental health issues. Probably is from an overactive immune state, the adrenaline turns all the neurotransmitters up. So instead of being psychological itself, it's often uh, these neurotransmitters cross the blood-brain barrier and lead to irritability, uh, sadness, uh, crying, kind of like in waves. Uh, you might have uh, the uh, an anxiety and a combination with uh, sadness, despair, every emotion you can think of. Some people have Lyme rage, and uh, they might uh, actually be at a psychiatrist doing what they can, but if it's Lyme, it's difficult to often get control over those mood issues. OCD is also talked about. So I wanted to um, tell you that this is part of a Common Sense Lyme series. I just thought I'd give you the highlights of uh, what is happening to the different organs in the body. You should be talking to a doctor to try to work out whether Lyme disease is least consideration in these situations. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day.